you found keto, but you're not necessarily always keto. You want to talk a little bit about why you kind of veer in and out of it, that it's not something you do all the time? Yeah. So um, like I said, you were the first person I was introduced to in the keto space um, because I was doing my research. And I think that's so important that if you're going to make, a, I think changing a, your diet around is a huge life decision and it can have some positive um, effects and it can have some detrimental effects as well. You have to know what you're getting into. So I greatly researched the ketogenic diet and really dove into it and the history behind it and um, read your book and listened to your podcast and um, got familiar with Dom D'Agostino and, um, you know, befriended people in that space and uh, Rob Wolf and stuff like that. And um, I I don't know. I just was so interested in what it does for your health. Like if you have drug resistant epileptic seizures or yeah. if you have lupus or whatever it is that it was helping people who had these issues or cancer. And I just thought that was so fascinating. Um, and I really wanted to learn about it to help other people more so than help myself because there was no real good reason for me to do it, but I did do it. I did it like do a strict classic ketogenic diet for about a month and a half and and I learned a lot from that, but I, but it wasn't for me. Like I didn't really need to do it and um, definitely got That's sick fun. of it. Learn. Get into that a little more because this will be curious for people because I, I agree with you. I don't think everyone needs to be on a strict ketogenic diet. Can you talk about why it wasn't good for you? Was it because you were an athlete and it kind of interfered with some of the bodybuilding and things that you do? T talk about some of that a little more. Yeah, definitely. Um, a big part of it is when you do a classic ketogenic diet, you're, you know, obviously you know this, but for other people that are listening, it's, it's high fat and moderate protein and low carbohydrates. And yes, as somebody who's as active as me, um, and even being a woman, like I need protein and I wasn't getting enough protein doing those classic ratios. So I learned to modify the ketogenic diet and do keto for me. And actually back in 2013, when I did my first fitness competition, I was trying to get that, that stage look that all these women and men had like with the abs. And I was like, how do these people have six pack abs? It was just beyond me. And so I asked, asked my dad's advice and I said, you know, how can I look that way? I feel like I'm almost there, but I just have a little, you know, like a little fat hanging on. And I don't think it was fat. I think it was actually water weight because as soon as I did, did it, he was like, why don't you try more of a ketogenic diet? He didn't talk about a classic ketogenic diet. He didn't really get too much into it, but he's like, you know, add a little bit more fat into your diet make sure you're eating enough protein and keep your carbs low. And uh, I just eliminated all the processed food in my diet and um, started to eat real food and, uh, you know, just added fat to what I was eating. And I was probably eating more of like a higher protein, moderate fat, low carb diet. And right. I learned, it changed my body. Like in a week, it was, I, I had those abs and I was like, this is so unbelievable. And so I sort of realized that I could always go back to that at any point in time if I wanted yeah. to have that look like if I was prepping for a shoot or, you know, something on TV or whatever it was and I wanted to look my best and that it wasn't hard, you know, like it wasn't like, oh, I'm my sacrifices with my food. It was like, I feel the best that I've ever felt in my entire life. I have so much energy. And um, yeah, so that's how I figured out like modified ketogenic diet that you modify it for you for your needs if you're an athlete or if you're a woman or if if you're a man or whatever it, it, it's gonna be different depending on the individual and what's going on in their life and this is one of the problems that i've seen being in this game for so long i see people labeling labeling keto and ketogenic as a diet it's never been a diet. It's a metabolic state. And so if you're eating in such a way that still puts you in that metabolic state, that's keto for you. So when you bumped up the protein, which I think is a good idea for a lot of people to eat more protein, a little more protein than they do, um, and then moderate the fat somewhat and then keep the carbs low, that could still be ketogenic. Now, did you ever test your ketones in the midst of that or what? Yeah, um, I was really big into measuring my ketones. At first, it started with, you know, 
it, peeing on a stick. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that works for, you know, like the first month or month and a half, and then you're not going to get those as accurate of a result. So then you need to move on to other things. I tried the, you know, one of the breathalyzers. And um, I thought that those were annoying. I didn't like that. I th felt like there was a lot of issues with like getting accurate readings. And then um, I dove into testing my ketones. Um, yeah, with, you know, through blood. But um, Commodore. And uh, I really like that. I really enjoyed that. I'm like a science like geek. I love biohacking. And so I love yeah. seeing how your body's reacting and getting those like instantaneous results. And I don't think that people should be hung up or fixated on that because like, when was the last time I measured my ketones? I can't even remember. Like, it's not yeah. something I do anymore. But um, I think that it can be a great tool in the be beginning if you're starting you know, from if you're going from like a standard American diet to, you know, going to more of a keto diet or low carb to understanding how much, you know, carbohydrates you can get away with eating and still being in ketosis. But I also don't think that the end all be all like you can still be burning fat and not being ketosis. So you can't yeah. be obsessed with that. Yeah, the chasing ketones thing never made sense to me either. Um, and not that I think pursuing that at the beginning, as you uh, stated, is a bad idea because you're generally going to have those higher levels. I've done this a very long time. I barely see like 0 0.5, 0 0.6 some days, but I know just based on how I feel, my brain tells me like the way my brain functions at 49 years old, I'm like, I could run circles around late teen, early 20s in college. Like I sometimes wish I need to go back to college because I know I would just be yeah. like, so cognitively there um, compared to before. And so it's those little things that you just notice. That, what, tell us about some of the things you notice that tell you you're living healthy, even if it doesn't show up on a ketone meter. For sure. And and I, I'm glad that you brought that up just listening to your body because I'm all about, you know, in just being intuitive and being in tune with when you eat something, how it makes you feel um, or how a person makes you feel or whatever. Like you always got to listen to your gut. Um, but yeah, I think that there were there were there were definitely incre like really like signs that were just jumping out at me, like my cognition. Obviously, that's a huge thing for me having the issues that I have, the dyslexia and ADHD, I'm always trying to figure out how to make my brain function better. And I noticed that my cognition was just like on fire that I was able to, for the first time, like read something and then memorize it and be able to like tell my friend like, hey, like I'd like summarize something that I just read. Um, and I'd never been able to do that growing up. Um, so my memory was so much sharper and I had endless amounts of energy, especially when I'm training for this competition where you're, you're working out a lot of hours and a week. And you're, you know, on top of that, I had my career and I wasn't exhausted. I just was like, this is crazy. It's, you know, midnight and I still have so much more energy. I can just keep on going. Um, it was like, I took a magic pill or something that made me, I don't know, just like unstoppable. I, I had, um, you know, obviously one thing that I noticed was the water weight. So like I noticed when I go low carb that all of a sudden I can see my abs and I don't have this uh, little extra layer of whatever it is. Like you just feel like, oh, is that like fat or something? But it's not, it's just like water weight. Um, yeah, I, I felt like my mood had improved. Um, I was just a happier person to be around, more balanced mentally. Um, so yeah, those, those sorts of things. And I also felt like I performed better in the gym too. Like I, because I had more energy, um, and it just improved my self-confidence all around because of all those things. Well, the energy thing doesn't surprise me. A lot of people, they don't realize when you're a sugar burner, you have about 2000 calories worth of energy stored in your glycogen, uh, that once that's used up, you have to refuel or you'll crash and bonk. Uh, especially in the uh, context of racing, running. Um, but if you are fat adapted, you have upwards of 80 to 100,000 calories worth of energy. This is why people that go keto, they kind of have that kind of burst of energy suddenly that they've never noticed before, and they can go many hours without eating. Do you implore any intermittent fasting? Yeah, that was something that I forgot to mention was I was amazed by the fact that 
I could go for hours without eating. You know, I was used to be eating three meals a day and then sometimes having snacks. And in high school, it was a nightmare. I felt like I was constantly hungry because I was eating, you know, ma mainly carbs at that point. And it was miserable. I was like, I just ate an hour ago and I'm starving and I'm hangry. Um, so, yeah, I do um, intermittent fasting and um, I you know, I've experimented with different, doing it different lengths of time, but yeah, usually I eat dinner around six o'clock now. And then I eat my first meal around one or two. And I am not hungry anytime before that. And if I ever was randomly, I would eat, but I'm just not, my body's so used to going that length of time without eating. Yeah. And it's a beautiful feeling when you can go a long time. And sometimes when people go keto, they'll say, well, I wasn't hungry today. So I didn't know, should I eat? Should I not eat? I'm like, you can skip a day of eating. Like, that freaks people out. Uh, I recently finished an 18-day fast. I don't recommend that for everybody. But I have the body fat to support it. So I didn't feel uh, that it was going to harm me. But there are some people that they freak out if they miss one meal. And I'm going, you know, historic times, like paleo times, that's how they lived. It was normal to skip meals. There was no such thing as a construct of breakfast and snack and lunch and snack and dinner and snack and midnight snack. That's something we in modern society with food availability everywhere just kind of latched on to. But it was never historically the way any human ate. Absolutely. And like, you know, being a member of Gold's Gym Venice and being a part of that bodybuilding community and competing, people thought that I was insane what I was doing at the time. They were like, you're you only eat two meals a day. And like, you eat avocados and whole eggs. You can't eat that on a bodybuilding diet. And I go, you're coming to me for advice because you want to yeah. know why I look the way that I do. Well, this is what I'm doing. So, um, you know, maybe you need to open up your mind a little bit, but I understand like with, with bodybuilding, that's, I don't even want to go there. It's a whole different beast. And when you're a guy, you're trying to put on a lot of size, right. you need, you're going to need more meals. That's the truth. I do want to go there a little bit because the bodybuilding community actually was one of the first ones to embrace the ketogenic approach as a bodybuilding modality. Can you talk about a little bit of that and how it applies to like how people could eat to be that way? I know a lot of it's genetics, uh, getting the big muscles, but making their body the best fit that it can be. Um, yeah, I mean, for me, I'm such a huge advocate for of that because it was like, I won, I, I decided to do different things. I did like three competitions. So my first one, I did a modified ketogenic diet. And then the second one, um, I decided to try more of a typical bodybuilding diet. And it was, it went against everything that I was taught growing up because my dad always taught me how healthy fat was and always yeah. encouraged me to eat a lot of fat. Cut and, it down. Yeah. And so yeah. I had low fat. I was eating like six meals a day. And it was a miserable nightmare. I mean, I was starving all the time. I had no energy and I actually wasn't seeing the results that I wanted. So for me, it didn't work out well. Um, but yeah, I'm really glad that people in the bodybuilding community have embraced this. And I think some of the older bodybuilders were doing this and even, uh, you know, people that are legends in the community um, from back in the day, like Dan Duchesne, I think he was more in tune with uh, going keep like ketogenic diet and, um, you know, carnivore diet and those types of things. But it just seems like, you know, I don't know more recently that people got into the whole typical got to eat six meals a day, bro. And, you know, got to carry around my, you know, jabroni jug <laughs> with my water and like all these things. And like, Hey, it does definitely work for some people, but I think that you really need to, to open up your mind because there might be other things that you can do and get the same results. So you mentioned the carnivore diet. I know one of your best friends is Chris Bell, and he eats a carnivore diet. Um, what are your thoughts on it? Do you think it's something people can try? And is there any contraindication for women? I think that it is extreme. And I think that if you are in a situation where, you know, you're having health issues or you have an extreme amount of weight to lose, um, that it's a really good option. I decided to try it and I did it for like two or three days and I had explosive diarrhea, like nonstop. Sorry, I wow. know that's goodbye, but um, it was 
awful. And I was like, why the hell am I doing this? Like, I don't need to do this. I'm not trying to lose weight. I'm not trying to, you know, help any specific issue that I'm having. Because you're a hacking nerd. That's why. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I just want to do experiments.